What's going on everybody? Gareth here, FCP Euro. Welcome back to another DIY video. Today we're going to be installing rear brakes on this F3328 iX drive behind us. But this is going to be the same process for any F30 that has the floating calipers or more simply put that doesn't have the Brembo uh, performance package calipers that you would find on some of these F30s. There are different braking systems, so you do have to be aware of that. Uh, this particular video is only be covering the standard style calipers that you might have seen in other BMW applications. So that said, uh, we're going to be installing the Zimmerman Z-coated rotors along with these TRW Ultra brake pads, and of course replacing the pad wear sensor while we're in there, which you should be doing anyway. Uh, but with that said, let's talk about some of the tools we need to do this job, and we'll go ahead and jump into it. So some of the tools we're going to need to do the job, a 6mm Allen and an 8mm Allen, 16 millimeter socket. I have both a 3 8 and a half inch. The half inch drive is going to be for torquing those caliper carrier bolts back up. 17 millimeter socket for taking the lug bolts off. Along with that, you're going to want a series of ratchets, potentially a hammer to uh, get the rotor off the hub just in case there is some corrosion. Flathead screwdriver, really useful for prying. A couple different torque wrenches, uh, one that could do 28 newton meters of torque, another one that could do 110. If you have a torque angle gauge, it's great because you do have to uh, yield those rear caliper carrier bolts. Uh, if you have a torque wrench that can do uh, torque angular access to it, that's going to be helpful as well. Uh, brake caliper retraction tool, super useful. Caliper hook, probably want one of these on hand uh, just to hang the caliper up and out of the way while you're doing other service. Always useful to have a light, especially underneath the car because it typically is pretty dark and it can be hard to see. And uh, assortment of power tools, if you have access to them, they make the job a little bit easier, but not mandatory. So with that said, let's go and get into it. So first step is obviously get the vehicle supported in the air safely. If doing this at home or don't have access to a lift, uh, Please make sure that your jack stands are safe and that you are not getting underneath the vehicle when supported by hydraulic floor jack. That is about the most dangerous thing you can do. So just make sure the vehicle is stable, properly supported. Please ignore these bald tires. And we're going to go ahead and get into it. Uh, first, 17 millimeter uh, socket to remove the five lug bolts. And if you have wheel spacers on your car, just, you know, now's a great time to put some anti seize, knock back the corrosion something anything so you don't have to deal with this next time we have a really in-depth tech tip video on how to remove these anti-rattle clips but basically it's just a spring-loaded mechanism to hold the brake caliper to the outboard pad basically prevent the outboard pad from making a rattling noise hence anti-rattle clip some of them you can basically squeeze into your hands uh, I've noticed on a lot of the F chassis cars these have quite a bit of spring tension on them so just come in here with a flathead screwdriver between the rotor and the clip push back here in the center only don't pry from the ears you don't need to do that and then once you get these ears out from these two holes here on the caliper, comes off, no drama, no fuss. Oh! Uh, next up, we're gonna remove our uh, brake rotor set screw. It's a six millimeter Allen. Hopefully it's easier to move. Uh, if not, um, and you actually strip the hex, you might have to either drill the head off of the screw off, or you could sometimes knock it off with a chisel if you just kind of catch the corner should be able to spin it. These aren't torqued that tight, or they shouldn't be. Um, so just in case this gets stuck, you can still remove them and get the rotor off. Chisel or drill, those are your options. So next up, we're gonna go ahead and remove these access caps here on the back of the guide pin bushings. There we go. The guide pins are eight millimeter Allens. Next up, before we pull the caliper off, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the pad wear sensor out of the inboard brake pad. And then I'm gonna pull the caliper off the carrier. I'm gonna hang it with this caliper hook up and out of the way. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and remove the two 16 millimeter bolts that secure the caliper carrier to the knuckle. Probably. Just pull the rotor off. Fortunately, um, this rotor wasn't seized, but if the rotor is seized to the hub, it's usually because of corrosion that builds up here. Uh, so you can go ahead and tap the hat with the hammer. The vibration should allow it to wiggle free. Uh, other thing to note is, depending on the adjustment of the parking brake mechanism, you might need to wind it back. Uh, your star wheel's up here, and you can actually access the star wheel through the lug hole, uh, even if the rotor is still on. Uh, so sometimes you have to wind these things back so that the brake shoes are actually inward a little bit. So just in case these have a big lip on the inside, you don't want them getting caught up. Next, I'm going to clean the uh, wheel hub. There's a little bit of surface corrosion here. 
Want to make sure this is knocked back so that the rotor will sit flush against the hub. So I'm just using this uh, die grinder, but of course, you know, if you have some sandpaper at home or some kind of abrasive, you can do this by hand or you can use a wire wheel on it, on a drill, a bunch of different ways. We just want to knock this stuff back as much as possible. Just using a wire brush here to uh, clean some of the loose material off the brake caliper here. You want to make sure that these are clean and that uh, there's no buildup of old brake material uh, because it could cause the pads not to properly slide on the carrier. And you don't want that. So now's a good time to clean some of this as much as possible and get it to a nice clean surface. I'm gonna go ahead and push uh, the piston back in using this caliper retraction tool. Obviously, these pads have quite a bit of meat on them, so uh, this car did not need the service done, but we're doing it for the video. Um, normally, if that piston was pushed all the way out or pretty close to the end, like basically if these pads are worn down, it's gonna take a lot more to get them back in. But all you're looking for is that the pad will push back into the caliper easily. If it doesn't slide in easily, well, you might have a seized uh, piston, or you could have a um, messed up soft line that's basically preventing fluid from going back into it. Way to determine that is if you crack the bleeder screw and then you could push the piston back in, you then have a potentially bad soft line. However, if you crack the bleeder and you can't push the piston back in, that means your brake caliper needs to be replaced. The piston is probably seized. Yeah. We're gonna go ahead and install our new rotor should sit on the wheel hub nicely. If it will not center itself on the hub, it might mean you still have some corrosion there that's fighting you. So shouldn't have to force it on, should just slide on. And everything should line up easily. We'll reinstall the set screw, make sure that the rotor stays in place. Beautiful. Next up, we're gonna reinstall our caliper bracket. Torque spec on our carrier bolts is 50 newton meters plus 90. That was quick. That was quick. Cool. <laughs> now we're gonna go ahead and do our torque angle, 90 degrees. So we're gonna take our inboard pad, our new pad wear sensor. And we're just gonna go ahead and click those together like so. You'll feel the pad wear sensor click into the little groove on the backing plate. And then we're gonna take our caliper and then we're gonna go ahead and take our caliper like so. And we wanna fish. Our pad wear sensor wiring lead through this window in the top of the caliper. You could technically do this after the fact. I'm just doing this now. Save myself a little bit of time later. And then we just go ahead and we push our brake pad into the caliper piston. So want to go ahead and get those tangs lined up and it just pushes into place. Then we're going to take our outboard pad, sit it up here on the carrier. And then we're going to go ahead and take our caliper, put it up here on the carrier like so. And we're going to go ahead and install a couple of our guide pins or at least one of our guide pins to kind of hold the whole assembly together. And then our guide pin bolts are gonna to be torqued to 28 newton meters uh, and once again, eight millimeter Allen. These are not very tight, basically just bottoms out the guide pin on the threads. So it is barely just tight is really what it comes down to. Even if you went at that with a ratchet, as long as they snugged up, you're pretty much right there. So here's a really good illustration of what the anti-rattle clip does. So without any kind of tension, on the caliper and the carrier. This pad can just sort of slap around inside of there. So the anti-rattle clips do exactly that. They just prevent the outboard brake pad from making a rattling noise. To reinstall, you wanna make sure that the ears of the spring are sitting on the carrier like so. And then you use your thumbs and push in. Now I have the anti-rattle clip on, we'll put our guide pin covers back on, they just clip into place. If your vehicle is missing these, highly recommend that you replace them. Just make sure that they're seated fully. And now I'll go ahead and get the old pad wear sensor out and install the new one. 
Remove this 10 millimeter nut. It holds the fender liner in place. Our little electrical box for the padware sensor is right behind here. Go ahead and open it. Our padware sensor is this connector right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and disconnect it. Then we have these two retaining clips back here that hold onto the wiring lead. The uh, padware sensor was not routed correctly on this car, so we're gonna show you how to do it properly. So first we're gonna hook the wiring lead onto the bleed screw cap. There's actually a little thing there for it, holds it in place. And then from this point, we're gonna hook it onto this bracket here on this upper control arm. Uh, the bracket is actually there specifically for this reason. It also holds the ABS wire. So I'm gonna pull our wiring lead all the way through. Like so. And then there's a little unlock tab back here. I wanna make sure that this wiring lead actually sits in this housing in the rear here. If I can find the damn thing, there it is. There we go. And now from this point, we're going to secure the wiring lead into this little bracket here. And then here, the second one, you'll notice like, you know, for example, this has this little rubber grommet here. This rubber grommet kind of indicates where it sits on a tab on the body. So it's almost impossible to misalign this. Uh, those tabs are always in position to prevent the wire from moving around too much. Um, so as long as you're kind of following where those tabs will go, you're gonna be good. And last, all you gotta do is just plug it back into the electrical housing. We're gonna go ahead and plug our uh, body connector into the wiring lead for the sensor. Unfortunately, you can see right here, this locking mechanism is broken. So it doesn't click into place, but it does bottom out. So you can get away with it. There's a little grommet that seals this in place to the electrical housing, a little box here. Then we're gonna go ahead and close the box. You'll hear that click, oops. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and just put this liner back on, put the 10 millimeter nut back in place, and we're good. Uh, really, it's gonna be the same process on the other side, just don't have to worry about the padware sensor. So that's how you go about replacing the rear brakes on any F30 that has the standard style floating rear calipers. Uh, this will not apply, like we said in the beginning of the video, to any of the F30s that would have the Brembo style, whether it be the factory installed or the dealer installed uh, performance package. So I hope you learned some of this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave in the comment box below. Hit that like button. Also hit subscribe, lots more videos on the way. And as always, we'll see you for the next one. Thank you for watching.